Initially, I planned to do just one video that would cover the painting and weathering of the E100. But I was seeing that it was going to be very, very long. So what I've decided to do is break it into two pieces. This piece will be putting down the base layers of paint, the primer, the camouflage, and then the next video will be weathering the model. That way I can break it down into manageable pieces. It still may be kind of long, but it won't be two hours long. So, on with painting the model. Well, time to prime the E100 using AK red oxide primer. That's the first time I've used this. And I did a little preliminary test mixing it with Tamiya X20. And it looks like it mixes pretty well. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I'm going to mix it about 50-50. I have my regulator set at 15 PSI. And we'll see how it sprays. And I'm using my Patriot 105. Alright, well I have the first side primed and I'll let this sit and cure for 24 hours and then I'll flip everything over and prime the other side. Well, I have the primary components all painted in red oxide. And once I let this sit up for 24 hours, I can start applying the camo. I did paint the gun barrel. And underneath the putty, the mantlet is in primer red, and I'm going to leave it in primer red. I'm going to do a three color camo. I'm going to base the camo on this scheme, but where I'm going to differ, and it's not going to be the exact same pattern, where the brown and the green meet, I'm going to have a band of dunkel gelb that separate the two colors. Here the wheels are green with brown camo. I'm going to paint the wheels all green. It'll have a primer red mantlet, gray gun barrel, and then it's going to have an olive green option two green, shaco brown brown, And then I have a custom mix dunkel gelb for the band that separates the colors. I have the fenders attached with masking putty so I can detach them. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to roughly follow this painting guide 
and it's not going to be exactly right. So I'm going to trace the camo pattern with this olive green. And I'm just going to trace it with the green because it's just green and brown. And then once I have the pattern down, I'm going to spray over it with Dunkel Gel. So this is going to be kind of interesting on how this is going to work. This is the first time I've tried something like this, and it's hard to explain it. You know, I'm telling you now, but until you see what I'm doing, it's, you know, you can't really grasp my meaning. So the first thing is to mix the paint just extremely thin. And I'll trace the pattern onto the model. And the patterns, it's not going to be exact, but I got to have something to go by because it's just easier than making it up. So, but it's not going to be exactly the same. I just need something to look at. I have my pattern on the model now, and the next thing I'm going to do is in all these border lines here, I'm going to spray that with Dunkel Gelb. I have the Dunkel Gelb on the E100. What I'm going to do, what the plan is, is after this dries for 24 hours, I'm going to use masking putty and I'll putty all of these Dunkel Gelb lines and I'll try to get the width of the lines approximately the same and then here where I marked the green, now envision putty being on all of these lines. All of these Dunkel Gelb lines would be covered in putty, you know, approximately to the width of this brush. And at that point, it's covered in putty, you know, the lines are. I will paint the green. And in this area, I will paint the brown. And once that's done, I can remove the putty and the paint scheme will essentially be done other than weathering. Well, I'm in the process of painting the E100. And as you can see, I've got part of it painted. This is my first time using this masking putty. And one thing I found out that uh, gravity has a great deal of effect on it. And you can see that if it sits in the tin too long, it flattens out. So it doesn't hold its shape very long. And that's why I'm working on the model parts at a time. So I did the back half. And now I'm working on the front half. And once I have the front half of the hole painted, and then I'll move to the turret. But, you know, overall, it's doing a pretty good job. I'm trying to make the Dunkel Gelb stripes uniform, but obviously they're not perfectly uniform. And my paint scheme, you know, it's just, uh, it's just a dreamt up paint scheme. So it's going to be interesting to see how it all turns out. It, uh, it's a little bit busy. But, uh, you know, moving forward with it. We'll just see how it looks when I'm done. Well, I got the front half of the hole painted. And uh, you can see how the, how the masking putty is definitely affected by gravity. So I'll take a, take a tweezers and peel off a small piece here. And it works pretty good. You know, you have to... Uh, account for it wants to go flat it wants to flatten out and uh, which I guess in a way you know it'll settle down into cracks and crevices but you can't build it up too heavy 
And if I leave this stuff on too long, it's going to go flat and my lines will be very wide. So that's why I've only done a part of the hole at a time. So I'll peel off the rest of the putty and see how it looks. Well, I have the hole painted. It's not exactly what I envisioned. Uh, you know, I was hoping to have the Dunkel Gel border striping narrower. But using the masking putty, it's the first time. And I got it on a little bit thick and it wants to flatten out. So it's a little heavier than I wanted. I wanted a little bit narrow bands, a little bit more narrow bands of Dunkel Gel. But I'll continue on with it and see how it turns out. But, uh, you know, overall it's an interesting look. And I'll keep going, finish the turret, and see what I have. Well, I have the paint done, at least the base coat paint. And I know the camo is a little bit unusual. And, but I wanted to try it see how it looked. I know the colors look cartoon bright right now, but I think uh, it'll look better after we get some weathering on it. And I'm going to leave the left front fender off and show off the tracks. The road wheels are all green, so I have uh, olive green and shaco brown for the colors, and then late war dunkel gelb for the border. So I guess next I'll do a little bit of chipping, get some decals on it. I'll move forward. Well, doing a little bit of chipping, a sponge, some primer red, and I'll blot off my sponge. You can see I've already started. So that doesn't look too bad. Now I'm going to try to put some scrapes and streaks on it with a brush. I'm going to need a few heavier blots for some rust, but yeah, we'll see how it goes. Eh? Alright, so I'm going to take a chance here. such a thing as going too far so all right well I'll just leave it at that well I'll continue on to the rest of the model well I have the initial phase for the chipping done and for the turret here and along the edges a little bit around the hatches another spot here in the side I'm going to put some metal in there as well to try to fill up some of the large spots of chips a little bit around the back hatch and you know with the side armor some in the front some on the side, a little bit on the back where the clevises would have been and those edges that would rub up against things or you would handle it and rub the paint off. Um, 
doesn't look like much right now, but uh, I'll try to dress it up with some smaller metal chips and see if we can get it to look a little bit better. Well now, I'll try to make my chipping look a little bit better. But adding uh, dark rust in the larger chips. This is a little bit tedious, but it'll make a big difference because I got a lot of, I got a whole lot of red here. But I'll continue to add these chips and I'll show you what it looks like when I get further along. Well, I have the chipping done. And I know this setup isn't the best. And I got some scrape marks here. I used a chisel and, a, to me, a panel line scriber to scribe some gouges into the side armor here. And painted some scrapes along the side. And I have some rust and some areas where the paint is flaked off. The front is a little more subdued and, uh, you know, probably should have chipped up the front a little bit more, but I'm going to leave it like that. Sides are scraped again. A little bit of rust here, some scratches. the turret. You know, I have some rust here inside the chip paint. Some scrapes in the front, scrapes here, a few scrapes on the back. And the same on this side. Some rust, some scrapes, and a little bit of chipping around the hatches. So I'm going to go ahead and go with that, and I'll consider that good enough. Well, it's time to clear coat my parts. I have the paint scheme done. I have the chipping done. I'm going to use MIG Matte Lucky Varnish. And I generally use satin varnish, but I'm going to use flat this time. See how I like that? I do like a dead flat finish. So I'm going to use this. I'm going to spray it with my Badger Patriot 105. I'm going to spray it about 13, 14 psi. And I'm going to give everything two coats. So, get everything cleared out here so I have room. And I'll get started. All right, I've given the varnish a good shake. I'm going to use it straight from the bottle. It's pretty thin, so. I'm going to get on light coats because I don't want it to run on me.
All right, well, I have the matte clear coat done and it's cured for 24 hours. That, that squeaking sound in the background is my 3D printer. I used MIG's matte lucky varnish and uh, it sprays really well. It's a little thin, you gotta kinda watch it a little bit so you don't get runs. I got two coats on the on the model and it turned out turned out nice. You can just barely see the edge of the decals. Decals are just a touch thick. Not not as bad as some I've seen, but not as good as, as the, the best, but they're pretty good. Pretty good. You can barely see any any edges to the decal. And what I'm going to do now is I think I'm going to work on weathering the undercarriage of the model. And then after that, I can apply the road wheels. So I'll get started on putting a little dirt and mud under the bottom of the tank. Well, here's a little bit of a preview of what's coming in the next video. In the next video, I'll weather the model and we'll get it uh, a little bit further towards being complete. Hope you join me. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you next time.